So apparently the NIV claims that the devil is Jesus. I'm Aiden and welcome to A Pastor's Life For Me. Part of my outreach with this ministry is sharing my videos across different pages. As well, I see questions people post, which gives me ideas of what to make for videos. But as a result of this, I see a number of depressing posts. And many of these are people who are behaving more like wolves than sheep. So anyways, I came across this one guy who said, the NIV claims that the devil is Jesus. Seriously, I'm not making this up. That's what he claims. And if you haven't guessed already, this is coming from a King James Version onlyist. Because we all know that the inspired word of God is the King James Bible. If you haven't noticed, I'm being sarcastic. But I actually do see posts where people claim that. Now don't mistake me, I'm perfectly fine with somebody using the King James Version. Do I think that it's the best English translation? No. Biggest reason? We have found thousands of more manuscripts since the King James Version, including the Dead Sea Scrolls. So now if you don't know, the Bible was originally written in Hebrew, Greek, and a couple portions in Aramaic. Now I've studied Hebrew and Greek, so why don't we take an actual look at what's going on in the NIV? The passage in question is Isaiah 14, 12. Now to interpret the Bible correctly, we need to have, as Chris Roseborough says, context, context, context. You can't just pluck out verses to suit your own interpretation, which is kind of what's going on here. Now context wise, this passage is interpreted as Satan's fall from heaven. Now before his sin, the devil was an angel and a very beautiful one at that. And we know his angelic name as Lucifer. This is a King James version of the Bible. <sighs> Don't you just love that smell? I wish all books smelt like old books. Anyway, the passage states, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? So from a little bit more modern English, from the New King James Version, says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. Now the line that is in question is, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Both the King James Version and the New King James Version say the same thing there. This is my NIV. It reads, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. Now, the NIV, the NASB, and the ESV do not translate it as Lucifer, rather Morning Star or Day Star in the case of the ESV. Now, remember, this passage is talking about the devil. So now, if you go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, it'll read, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star. Uh-oh. I think we're in a little bit of trouble. Did you catch it? Isaiah 14, 12 in most modern translations speak of how the morning star fell from heaven. And as we just read, Revelation 22 verse 16 states that Jesus is the morning star. Therefore, the devil is Jesus according to most modern translations. So, how do we deal with this? Well, firstly, this is majorly taking the verses out of context. Remember, context, context, context. Isaiah is speaking about Satan. Revelation is speaking about Jesus. It does seem though that both are called the morning star, but this isn't as big of a deal as it may sound. Number one, Isaiah is talking about Lucifer as an angel, where he would shine like a morning star. Number two, just because they're called the same name doesn't mean they're the same person. Using this logic, Jesus and Satan must be the same because they're both called lions. 1 Peter 5, 8 in the King James Version. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now many times in the Old Testament, God is referred to as a lion. But if we go to Revelation 5, 5, weep not, behold the lion, the tribe of Judah, the root of David. That's speaking about Jesus. By taking verses out of context, you can basically make the Bible say anything that you want it to. So what's really going on here? This passage was originally written in Hebrew, which I have here. It reads, how you were fallen from heaven, morning star, son of dawn. The word that is in question here is Hillel. Hillel? 
Lucifer. Lucifer. Hey, Leo. They don't really sound the same, now do they? So the Hebrew doesn't use the word Lucifer or even the name Satan. But one of the earliest translations of the Bible was the Hebrew into the Greek. This is known as the Septuagint. The Greek says, how you fell from heaven, morning star. Heos for us, Lucifer. Lucifer, heos for us. They don't sound the same either. So if it's not in the original Hebrew, and if it's not in the Greek Septuagint, which was translated even before Christ's birth. Where do we get the name Lucifer from? Both of them don't have it. They don't say the name Lucifer. So why does the King James? On a side note, Revelation 16.22 doesn't even use the same Greek word for morning star. So if you've been watching up to this point, you're probably not going to be surprised when I tell you the name Lucifer isn't Hebrew or Greek. It's Latin. So during the late 4th century, the church commissioned a man named Jerome to translate the Bible into Latin. This is known as the Latin Vulgate, a translation that the Catholic Church pretty much only used up until about 70, 80 years ago. The word Lucifer is the Latin word for morning star. So in Isaiah 14, 12, the King James Version didn't actually even translate the Hebrew word Hillel. That's because this word only shows up once in the Hebrew Bible. Now the word Lucifer in the Latin Vulgate shows up four times. And this is where you see the inconsistency of the people who claim this. One of the four places it shows up is 2 Peter 1.19. The King James Version translates it as, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in the dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Do I rest my case? the King James Version of the Bible isn't even consistent in how it translates Lucifer. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, out of the four places where the Latin word Lucifer is used, only once does the King James translate it as Lucifer. And that's because the three times in the Old Testament, it's three different Hebrew words and the one Greek word for the New Testament. And that Greek word is basically the same Greek word used in Isaiah 14, 12. However, Peter's using it in a positive way to defend the authority and inerrancy of scripture. If you wanna go further into that logic, the devil is scripture. I don't think I can go on anymore or that I even really need to. If you want to look more into this, I'm going to link this helpful article which breaks this down even further. But I do want to quote one thing from here. The logic breaks down on the first premise. This premise being the word Lucifer is exclusively evil. To call Jesus the morning star in 2 Peter 1.19 as well as Revelation 22.16 makes him no more evil than calling Satan God makes him good referencing 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The point behind all this is that when you read your Bible, context, context, context. The King James Version of the Bible. It's an amazing translation in its day, and it holds up relatively well today, but it is not without its errors because it's not the original translation. The King James Version can't reflect perfectly the Hebrew or the Greek. Going from one translation to another translation, you're always gonna lose something. So if you're wondering what translations I recommend, the number one is the ESV. It does its best to try and stay true to the original languages while still flowing well in English. If you want one that reflects the original languages a little bit more closely, go with the NASB. But by doing that, it is a little bit more choppy. If you have a harder time understanding those, the NIV is still pretty good. I'd recommend that you get the late 20th century version over the newer vision though. But whatever translation you use, just don't take verses out of context. And the phrase that I always end the videos with, know, do, and share the word, but do it with love. And as I said, a lot of times you see people acting more like wolves than sheep. So when you share the word, make sure that you're doing it in context, but that you're also doing it in love. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, give this video a like, and share it with people that you know. Until next time, remember, know the word, do the word, and share the word. But as always, we do it in love.